Hi guys, welcome back to another SQL to Excel uh, video. Um, just a quick recap of what we covered last time. We wanted to connect our SQL Excel uh, spreadsheet to the SQL server, uh, where the SQL server has got uh, our customers table. So to do that, we created a, a, a quick macro just to create um, a connection by using an ADODV connection to the SQL server, uh, a new ADODV record set to create a record set to hold the information. Uh, we defined our connection string to the database, passed in uh, an SQL statement to select all the data from the customer's table. Then we would simply open the connection to the database, um, populate the record set by using our SQL command and then put in the results of the record set into sheet customers range A2. So if I just quickly delete this, click the button again, yes that's all working brilliant. Okay so but ideally now we'd like to be able to update the uh, information from the Excel sheet in order to update the SQL server because the average user won't uh, know how to go into SQL, uh, SQL Server and update all the information from there. It's and what what was the point of having an Excel spreadsheet? So to do that, what we need to do, or to update any piece of information in SQL Server, we need to do it like this. So update DBO dot customers, which is our customer table. And let's say we wanted to change the age of the last customer we had in our table, which was Dan McLeod. Let's say we want to make his age equal to 30 rather than 25. And then we need to tell it which ID this applies to. So in this case, Dan McLeod is customer ID 6. If we just set a age to 30 without telling it, where the ID is 6 it would simply update all of the ages to age 30 in the table and that's not what we want so we just execute this line one row affected that's worked reselect so as you can see Dan McLeod is now age 30 so that's how you do it in SQL server so in order to do that via Excel uh, there's, there's a few ways. You could simply create a macro to update or loop through all of the rows in the table and run an update statement on all of those and do it all in one go, but why would you need to do that? Um, the most efficient way is to simply update the row that you are currently selected. So in order to do that, you go to the sheet and what we're going to do is create uh, a worksheet level operation so that when something happens in the sheet it automatically triggers this macro so this is a change event as you can see here private sub worksheet change obviously I've written this out prior to this video so uh, let's just take care of a few things first first I've had to uh, make a few declarations up here which I'll talk you through in a second as with pretty much all macros that I write I always turn off screen updating and turn off the or make the calculations manual this is purely to speed everything up uh, with change event uh, level macros I always make a habit of disabling the events now the reason for this is if you change something on the sheet and the macro triggers if you uh, refresh effectively refresh the data as part of the macro then the event will just keep triggering again and again and again into an infinite loop and it will crash so whenever you uh, run a macro on a worksheet change level you always it's always good practice to disable the events run the macro refresh your data and then re-enable at the end and then that way it doesn't cause any infinite loops. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a stop marker here and let it trigger and it will stop in that place and I'll show you what happens. So, let's say we wanted to, so double check, okay, so Dan McLeod's age is now 30. Uh, why is that triggered? Okay, ignore that. Let's take that for a second. Okay, so purely just refresh the SQL data and that event kept triggering because obviously we were refreshing the data. So let's put that stop back in. Okay, so Dan McLeod's age we changed in the SQL server to age 30. Let's say we want to change it again back to 25. So if we just type 25 and press enter, now that we've pressed enter, the uh, worksheet change event has triggered. And because we've put this stop mark here, the macro has stopped in place as we've requested. So let's use F8 to step through this macro. So what are we doing? First of all, we're disabling the screen updating so we don't get any kind of flickering. Although, to be honest, with only six records, you wouldn't really get that anyway. But I always make it good practice to do that. Turn off the calculations again just to speed up the macro and disable any events. So when you're up refreshing the data in the sheet for a worksheet change event, always turn off the events so that we don't get into an infinite loop situation. Now what am I doing? I'm, defer I'm defining the last row and the last column. That's what this LR and LC means. So to do that we just say sheet customers dot cells and then row count the number of rows in column one and then show me the last row. So if we hover over this LR we should see last row seven which it is. Brilliant. And the same concept for the last column. We're saying for sheet customers cells and row one and then count the columns to the end and then show me that will show the last column so last column should be five so one two three yeah okay column five is the last column now why have i done that well basically if we want to change something here we don't want to trigger the update event because it's irrelevant you know anything over only within the scope of the table where there is any information do we want to actually trigger the event so in order to do that we are saying okay if the target row I the target row is something that tells you okay it will identify which row you're currently on and which column you're currently on if, if you want it to okay so the target row is seven because we've just changed uh, a value in row seven so if the target row is greater than one and is less than or equal to the last row basically within the scope of this table then and also if the target column is less than or equal to the last column so basically from A to E or from row 2 to, uh, two to 7 only then if only if the changes happen within those defined parameters do we actually want to do something so now that that's passed, we are now going to say, okay, the ID, the first name, the last name, the sex and the age for the customer is going to be defined as such. So ID is equal to sheet customers target dot row column one. So this is the target row and this is column one. So the ID should be six. Uh, the first name, last name, sex and age. So if I just jump through all of those, if I hover over, it should be Dan McLeod male and we've changed the age to 25 so that's all good if you're wondering what this uh, little quotation additions are in SQL server whenever you um, define something like uh, a name or a string of text you always have to write it with a, an apostrophe either side like this if you write it without the apostrophe it identifies uh, as invalid uh, with values like uh, integers and things like that you know you don't need the apostrophe either side but the strings of text you do so that's why we put that on there so if I hover over as you can see it says Dan and it's got like the speech marks over side but also if you can see this just inside the speech it's got the little apostrophe as well 
Okay, so now that we've redefined all of our uh, customer parameters, we are set the connection to the database, set the record set. Actually, we don't actually need to do that because all we're going to be doing is uh, executing an SQL command. We don't need to use the record set function, so I'll actually take that out. So let's. Uh, uh, this is our connection string and uh, SQL statement. So we do update DVO customers and then set first name equals first name, last name equals last name, sex equals sex, age equals age. If I go to the immediate window and just do a question mark on SQL, that will show what the final SQL string looks like. So update DVO customers, set first name equals Dan, comma, last name equals McLeod, comma, sex equals male, comma, age equals 25, where ID equals 6, which is, as you recall, what we had in our um, <coughs> SQL in order to change that. Um, you have to write the SQL string out like this, so you, you start with your speech marks and write the text like this, but when you're adding in variables, i.e. these variables that we've declared up here and defined here, you have to do and you have to end the string like this with the speech marks and then do and symbol and then the variable and again and then you create the next part of the string like this. Um, you'll be able to study this uh, video at your leisure and sort of play around with this, but this is how you lay out the SQL statement if you are adding in variables. So we open the connection and then we just execute the connection uh, for the SQL statement. And we close that and then set the connection as nothing. Uh, what I've put here is to call the uh, 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 macro that we wrote before in order to effectively refresh. So what we've done is we've basically said, okay, if it's within this parameter of the table, um, to, uh, set the ver set the values of uh, the target row or the target customer as this, execute the statement, and then effectively refresh. So it will be quite seamless. So I'm just going to turn that off for a second. Go through and in the app in the sub procedure. So as you can, as you recall, we changed the age of Dan McLeod back to 25. As you can see from the SQL uh, window here, it still says 30. But uh, if we rerun the select command, it should change back to 25. Yes, it does. So we have now effectively changed <coughs> the age of Dan McLeod. Uh, using the Excel that we've created. So let's uh, change this to say 45. Right, let's let's get rid of this stop mark and just run it as normal. So refresh. Let's change it to 45. Now if I take that out, oh no, we've got to deal with null values. We'll do that later. So yeah, there we go, 45, if I go back in here, yeah, it's been changed to 45. What that little error was before, where I tried to uh, remove the value and then run the uh, macro, it was basically saying that because I tried to effectively change something to a null value, we haven't dealt with that here, so we'll do, deal with that in a second. We'll deal with that now, actually. Um, so once we go through all this, let's say let's just say that if uh, ID is equal to blank, then ID equals null. Basically, if anything, if if a value is uh, empty or a null of value, you have to say it's a null when passing it into the SQL string. So I'll just do that for all of these uh, variables. So first name equals blank, then first name equals null, and if if last name 
uh, as you can see I'm doing the speech marks and then the two apostrophe marks in between that's how it would look if there was no value in the cell oh we'll run through this in a second and if if sex equals blank then sex equals no and if if age equals with the age and the ID I'm just doing as two speech marks either side like that because we don't have to add the apostrophes because they are integer values age equals no and if okay so now we've dealt with all of those conditions if I just pause it there, let's say I wanted to take that out this time. And we'll run through. So last row, column, yeah. So target row is seven. Okay, we've gone already gone through that already. The age is empty. Uh where's the ID? That is the ID equals Type mismatch. Oh, I can't do this now. We'll skip over that for now. Uh, let's fix this. Let's fix this. So pause there, why is that causing a problem? We'll skip over that. So first name equals Dan, last name equals McLeod, sex equals male, age equals empty. Skip over that one. So okay, so age is equal to M well, age is blank, so effectively you want to say age is not. So why does it like the ID then? Ah, oh, it's evaluating to zero. Why is it evaluating to zero? Why is it Column one. That doesn't make any sense. It should be six. Oh, let's go back up there and try that again. Why is it because oh because we skipped over it. So why is it come up with a type mismatch problem? If I D equals blank talk to me, what is the problem? Let's retype that. Type mismatch. Bizarre. Um yeah, because it's the same conditions here. So, if or uh, what, let's try this. Or is empty ID doesn't like that either. Why doesn't like? Let's just get rid of that. Ignore that. Okay, fine. Okay, so now we update and execute. Sorry about all this, folks. Just having a bit of a, a problem with the ID. So, okay, it's now allowed for the fact that we've got a null value, in other words. Uh, let's take that off. 20, 30, null, null. Yeah, oh, it all works fine. Brilliant. I just had a problem with the ID for some reason. Okay, so there we go. We've effectively got now 553 years old. So we've effectively got uh, a two-way update um, Excel sheet to the SQL server. And I'm gonna finish the video there. Thanks for your patience.